I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. Um, I can't really, uh, if it's a little echoey, forgive me. I'm, I got OBS keyed up. We're going to be looking at something today, but please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me word for word, verse by verse, at some of the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Okay, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay, all right. And uh, read along with me because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world. Love not the world. This is not the be-all, end-all of all things. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth eventually. Okay, we're on the first earth. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, capital F, is not in him. But see, if you love the things of the world and the world itself, there is one that is your father. That be Satan, who is the little G-God of this world. And what does he do? Through, uh, I, I don't have my cell phone over here, uh, through your cell phones, your tablets and whatnot, what does he do? He flashes the world before you in a moment in time. And it's so much easier to do nowadays, especially when you're on your cell phone and you're flipping up and down and stuff like that. You can see all kinds of things just like that. You don't even have to leave your living room. Now, the real world, uh, you want to go to like the Bahamas or Hawaii or wherever, just examples. You will have to get your rear end off the couch and go and do something. Yes, yes, but see, the complacency, the idleness. You know what happens when people don't do anything? Nothing. And what a better way to make a people that could have in them a fire. What better way than to extinguish that? But number one, quite possibly taking away some of their freedoms for their safety. You know, make them work. And then say that they got to stay home. Hmm. Stay home. They use fear tactics and fear mongering. While they're at home, what do they do? Well, what do they do? I got, I got one of these, too. A little tablet. What do they do? You get on that health phone, right? Get on that health phone, and then you start looking up things, and the next thing you know, you, you wake up in the morning, and it's 9 o'clock, and the next thing you know, it's uh, 1.30 in the afternoon, and it felt like just a few minutes because you're memorized. Uh, memories, uh, whatever. You're hypnotized, we'll say, excuse me, by the scrolling, the scrolling. Do you realize that Satan, through his temptation onto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, do you realize what he said? All this will I give to you. If you fall down and worship me. He takes him up on a high pinnacle. And shows him. All the kingdoms of the world. In a moment of time. So. There is a big. Quite a possibility. Whether the probability of it going to happen. Don't know. But I want you to consider this. What have we looked at this week? Okay, we considered the um, <laughs> the possibility of things returning as they were a couple years ago. The possibility. It is quite possible. We also have covered idolatry. Because think about it. 
When you love the things of the world and the objects there, the objects that are extension of your covetousness. And then you have a self-appointed power, such as the Jesuitical government here in America, that will come down saying, it's for your better good and take these things away from you. What happens? You get threatened. You get rebellious, right? But see, your rebellion gets shifted. Why? Why? Because, number one, you love the things of the world. And when, and say, let's say that they reinstitute things as they were a couple of years ago. And you have to sit in your home. And you have a health phone or one of these things, a tablet or a laptop, whatever it is. And while you might not be able to go out in the actual physical world, through the eyes, through the ears. You know, Ignatius of Loyola did a whole thing, you know, was about the five, five senses. You can read about that in the, uh, in the uh, spiritual exercises, if you're curious. But remember, the wisdom that is of this earth is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. I have said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I don't want to go blind. Okay? I don't want to go blind. But you know, sometimes with these individuals who do not visually see, they have to go off of other things, other senses, but the lust that could be presented to you by that bright, shining angel of light, they don't have that temptation. They, they have temptations just like us, but differently. But see, the eye, the gateway through the eye, Verse 16 in 1 John chapter 2. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I got good clothes. Got a nice car. Got a pretty good house, got a fine secular job bowing down to the Jesuits, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, I got me a fine looking woman. Or woman, I got me a fine looking man, right? You've made it. You've made it. It's like the guy that our Lord talks about. I think that's Luke chapter 16, who all his goods increase, and then he's sitting there, it's like, you know, I got more stuff than I got room for the stuff. Aha! Here's what I'll do. I'll tear those down and build bigger so I can put more stuff in it. That devil George Carlin once said, a house is a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Think about that, huh? And that guy that our Lord was talking about, he sits back and he's like, you know, okay, I'm going to rest and take my ease. I got it made now. Now, fool. Now, fool who says in his heart there is no God. What will you do in the day when your soul is accounted for, will be accounted for, huh? All that stuff ain't going to buy you squat. Oh, you can buy a measure of feigned happiness. You could probably even buy yourself a person, spirit, soul, and body, to be along with you along the ride as long as you provide for them. Hmm. 
How does this begin? Lust of the flesh, covetousness. I want it. And the lust of the eyes. Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind, huh? And the pride of life. It's not of the Father, capital F, our Lord Jesus Christ, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. This, right, right, right there. This is not permanent. Well, the earth abideth forever. There's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. Okay? Whether this one earth is regenerated or whatever, Nonetheless, there is going to be a new earth. Okay? Okay? And the world passeth away, and the lusts, and the lust thereof. Because think about it. Satan, through, for so many of you, when he gets you through the eyes, begins with a lust in the flesh, but it's usually the eyes. It can be the ears. It could be your taste. It could be your smell. Yes, it can. You know? You know, for example, just an example, okay? I'll hear Fear Factory and my feet get a tam, tam uh, you know, you know, doing things, you know? Gotta run away. It's like, ah, shut up! I haven't done this lately, but, you know, you taste that greasy McDonald's cheeseburger hardening your arteries and killing you. It's like, oh, mm, 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 God, give me more of that. You're walking down the road and you get that unmistakable whiff of marijuana. Hmm? Or you're walking down the road, walking your dog, and some girl dressed like a whore walks by you with the most wonderful ointment of the apothecary. Most wonderful perfume. And it captivates you. It's like, I'll tell you what, man, this nose of mine is... <laughs> but um, there are many other senses, yes. But the lust of the eyes, which begins with the lust of the flesh, now, we've talked about, on many occasions, being careful about what we put before our eyes. And we're going to drill this point home a little bit today. We are also going to be looking at a video that a dear brother sent. Uh, only going to be doing the one, brother. The other one that you sent along with this one was okay. I don't trust the individual. I don't trust the individual doing this, but I mean, this we could be neutral about it because we're giving fact. You'll see what I mean here in a bit. Turn to Psalm 101. We're going to go through the scripture first before we go through this 10 minute video. Okay, we're going to get the scriptures first and then we're going to go through this video. Okay. Psalm 101. We're going to have some expository here, but only up to a point. Okay. Psalm 101, verse 1. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Ah, yes. The old, oh, only God can judge me. Don't judge me. Blah, 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 blah. They don't like judgment. They lost people, Christians, they don't like judgment. You know why? You know why they don't? Because they don't judge themselves. They don't judge themselves in the light of Scripture. They compare themselves among themselves, if anything. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 and verse 16. Now we, saved people, have received not the spirit of the world, earthly, sensual, devilish, but the spirit of Lowercase s meaning imparted spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost Spirit, uh, Holy Ghost teacheth, and the Lord is that Spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Lost people are dead in trespasses and sins, but they are still spiritual creatures. Remember, God breathed into their nostrils and man became a what? Living soul. You are comprised of three components. Like God, we have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. The correct, now this, this is a little thing, but think about it. There are those out there who say it backwards, body, soul, and spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. This is a this is a little Brad thing, okay? And you can go ahead and say Brad, whatever. Think about it. When you say body, soul, and spirit, you're starting with what? Tissue. We, mankind, is a spiritual being. But Brad, they're dead in trespasses and sins. I know that. But see... There's a spirit there. Spirit of man. And the spirit of man is what? Earthly. And Satan was cursed to eat dust all his life. The serpent, you know, in Genesis. We're dust. Okay? So what spirit is in them? The spirit of man. The spirit of this world. Which is all about the flesh, what they can see with the eyes, and the pride of life. Okay? And see, in our context, we have got the Spirit of God, not the Spirit of the world. Okay? We were imparted, meaning with the lowercase s there, we were imparted God Himself. Hence, and it's see in verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, philosophy and vain deceit, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, and the Lord is that spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So the spiritual things is what? The Holy Ghost within a saved, born-again believer, a saint, with spiritual. The authorized version is a spiritual book. But the natural man who has the spirit of the world receiveth not the things of the capital S, God himself, spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, unto them, unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Neither can he, neither, excuse me, neither can he know them because he is his own God. Going out with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. See, there has been, from, for the most part, not for everybody, <laughs> of course not, but in a way, there has been an abundance in this nation. And people have gotten to a pinnacle that is a little beyond their means, and they want to continue. So if you fall down and worship the devil, all will be yours. He'll give you everything, but at a price. And one of the most effective ways for the devil to do it is the eyes. Yes, there are the ways! But the most effective is through the eyes. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Mm. Mm. The context there is what? Holy Ghost in verse 13. Okay? Our Lord judges us the saints. How? Through the scripture. It begins with us. It begin, If judgment begins at the house of God. Okay. 
It begins with us examining ourselves daily. What are you putting before your eyes? Hmm? Hmm? What are you putting before your eyes? There's a beloved sister of ours who, um, who got the right idea. She comes online here and there to do here and there. But you know what this young dear sister does? She closes it, turns it off, and puts it away and gets her butt out there and does something. Even I myself, brethren, there comes a time where, or a day where it's like, okay, got to turn everything off. And get away from it and go outside, do some tracting, walk Xena, or spend the day with my wife talking about whatever. Okay? we got to be careful what we're putting before our eyes. Especially this late in the game. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? That we may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, yeah, because Christ is in us. Okay? Christ is in us. We are to judge ourselves and others by a perfect standard. Back to Psalm 101. And also, these people who are lost, dead in trespasses and sins, yet still a spiritual creature, um, they, they talk about don't judging, but yet they'll judge us saints when we tell them the truth just like that, isn't it? And they judge themselves to be their own gods. You talk about the epitome of hypocrisy. When you got someone who says to you, well, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> you're judging, you're already, you're already judging yourself as your own God. Go away. Psalm 101, verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in the fear of the Lord in a perfect way. The, the law of the Lord is perfect. The scriptures are perfect, the authorized version. And the way we are to live our life in accordance to scripture, God's way in and of itself is perfect. Problem is, we are fallible. The problem is that which I hate that I do. <coughs> okay, the problem is God's commandments are perfect, holy, and just, but we can't keep them even at our best. It was like with the Ten Commandments. Man can't keep God's commandments perfectly even today. Even today in this dispensation, we can't keep perfectly God's perfect requirements. This is why I get so irritated with these uh, sleazy believers, uh, believists, because they cheapen God's grace, because they have no concept of it. Okay? Paul, Paul, the greatest saint of the church of God, he struggled with sin. He struggled with sin. Sins that he came up with. I have to quote, quote Ruckman. If I were, if, um, if I were to go to hell for everything that I thought, I'd go to hell like a bullet. He said something around those lines. Our thoughts can be sin. Okay? And what happens when we put something before our eyes and you can't unsee it? And, <clears throat> excuse me, years and years and years and years and years go by, Mr. Ruckman. And you're in prayer, and something that you saw years ago comes to recollection from out of nowhere, and you remember it to the T. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way, when, oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Perfect is mentioned twice there. 
Different dispensation, keeping in mind this was faith and works, no eternal security during this dispensation. But the perfect is all centered on what? The Lord. Perfect way and a perfect heart. A perfect heart is a broken, contrite heart. Okay? Not a heart that believes it's its own God. Okay? And of course you have Romans 12. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know them by heart and that's good. Are you living that? What happens if they impose all this nonsense like they did a couple years ago and people are going to be stuck in their homes? If they don't revolt and tear apart the country... Speaking from the premise of America, I can't speak for other nations because I'm not there. You can, son. But anyway, what happens? And if, it, if, they, if they do, and the nation doesn't get torn apart, which I believe would be, will happen if they select Trump again, what are you going to do here? What are you going to do? Oh, get yourself a fancy schmancy cell phone or a, a tablet. Hmm? You know, we, we will watch documentaries and um, informational things. Uh, and, and we use, uh, we watch YouTube and we also will watch, uh, we will watch some stuff on that crazy odyssey. Okay, <laughs> which is incredibly anti-Semitic. But uh, uh, we will watch these things and some of these commercials that come up. A lot of hell phone commercials coming up. Have you noticed that? If you watch a if you watch a, a, a video on YouTube trying to learn something or watching something about you know what like like let, let, let's let's say you're watching something about vehicles and they got you know it's monetized and they come up with a commercial within the video right. And you got five seconds until you can click away from it. That way they get their money. But it's a hell phone commercial. A fancy schmancy titanium one even, right? Hmm. Hmm. And I forget what it is. Titanium and the con conductor thing with 5G. I, I, I can't remember what that's about. But, hmm. Hmm. You're right, brother. There are some dark times coming. You gotta remember in the book of Revelation it says that the whole world will go after the beast beast and worship him. Oh, how can the whole world do it? Huh? Oh, well, you know, you get yourself one of these tablets here and you turn it this way, and then you can get the whole view of it a little bit better. And you got this is basically a little television set in your hand. Okay? Why do you have it, Brad? There was a time when my phone died. I was talking to a brother from Ohio, and all of a sudden my phone died. And I had gotten one of these, and I re, you know, redid it and as if you needed to know that. you know. But, um, yeah. So they're going to put you in the houses and open you up to more technology. And show you the world in a moment of time, huh? Hmm. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He died for you. He saved you. He called you out of the world, out of Egypt. Uh, he's called you unto him to live holy and righteous for him to be an example unto the world. He doesn't want you to be like the world to win the world. See, that mentality shows me, shows me, that when you have that, well, you got to be like them to win them. Well, your father is the father of the world, not the uh, father who is of heaven and earth. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Will of God. Who are you proving it to again? 
Second Corinthians chapter six, verses twelve, and verse eighteen. Uh, no, um, 14 on verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? The thing there, Belial. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Hmm. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, if you're saved. God dwells in you, hence your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, not a building, okay? As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, Seth, the Lord Almighty. Now, Psalm 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate. I don't hate you. I despise you. <laughs> Uh, you filth, you think you're something special, you pond scum devil. Uh, don't you got a hot bed to go to sometime soon, buddy? Sheesh. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I hate the work of them that turn aside. That offer you these things. But see, we have a choice. Like Moses, he turned aside to see why the bush didn't burn. And when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, to see what? To see the Lord. But how many people are being turned aside to see the world given to them in a moment of time? Hmm? Sting about the eyes again. Sting about the eyes again. Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 8. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, because he said, Yea, hath God said. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. When man has wide open eyes, what happens? We'll find out. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw every precious stone was Satan's covering, sin is made specifically to look so appealing to your flesh. It's so beautiful. Oh, I got to get me some of that. And the woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And they saw. And what of course happened? Verse 8. Oh, uh, let's keep reading. And the eyes of them were them both were opened, like Satan said, but, and they knew that they were naked. They were walking around stark butt naked in the presence of God before this. They were. Just flapping around, you know? No shame. It's like when you're married, okay? You can be in front of your spouse. In your birthday suit, okay? And you ought not to be ashamed. I know there's a thing called modesty, but hey, it's like, you know, I tell my wife, hey, you know, hey, you know, it's, we're husband and wife, it's okay, we can do these things. So, hey, hey, is this a little too much for you, huh? Huh? They were ashamed. 
And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So their nakedness, which they before was like, oh, whatever. It was just a, a perfect, okay, a perfect relationship there. But when they did what he said not to do, she saw and went for it. You don't have the time for me to tell you, as a lost man, how much damage I've done to myself by when I saw fruit. <laughs> Everybody did it, huh? When I saw fruit that looked gorgeous to the eyes and went after it. Hmm? Think about Amnon and Tamar when he lusted after his half-sister or stepsister. One, he was related to her. Hmm? He was sick of love. What happened? He got part of that fruit, didn't he? And then that love that he thought he had turned into hate. I don't know who came up with the saying, but you better be careful what you wish for. Let's continue. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And yes, they saw God visually with their own eyes. God walked around. Okay. Okay, just like it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, okay, and in eternity, okay? We're going to be able to see God, all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, because they disobeyed, in comes shame. Something that was originally intended to be beautiful, like the, you know, a husband and wife walking around in their birthday suits, okay? Brother, sister. Okay, now granted, okay, granted, I understand, I understand, you know, you got windows and you can consider it, but, you know, if you're a husband and wife and you are inclined to do that in your own home, you sure, draw, draw the blinds, sure, go ahead, that, that would probably be the better thing to do, of course, but, you know, amongst yourself as husband and wife, there, there should be no shame there, okay? You know that? The bed between a husband and wife is undefiled. You can do anything you want as husband and wife. With consent, of course, of course, but, okay? But see, the whole point is she saw. Look what happened. Genesis 13. Let's look at another example of this. Genesis 13. Verses 9 out of verse 13. Lot and Abraham, or Abram, excuse me. He was still Abram at this time. Yeah, they, they Abram and Lot had a, because their stuff was too much. Huh? Verses 9 out of verse 13. Is not, and this is Abram speaking unto Lot, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right, then I will go to the left. Like, hey, look, we got too much stuff, okay? The land can't take both of us together. We, we need to break up. I love you, but we, we need to, we need to. It was Abram, by the way, who instigated that. Hey, let's. Let's split up, okay? Uh, absolutely, separate in himself. Lot was a just man. Lot's in heaven, absolutely. Don't forget that. But look at this. And Lot lifted up his eyes. And beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. 
before the land of, before the Lord, before the Lord destroyed, oh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So, hold on. He lifted up his eyes and saw, oh, look at how pretty that is. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered. Everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. So a visually appealing thing. But of course, even you uh, atheists know the outcome of this. But let's, let's continue this. Okay. And Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Now remember, you get the warning here, everything looked visually appealing to Lot. It was very well watered. It looked, it looked like what? Like the garden of the Lord. Like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. This is before the Exodus, by the way. Okay? But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Very important clue and, and lead up to what would be coming eventually, as you know, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, where we get the term Sodomy. Okay, you figure that one out on yourself. Okay? Hmm. So, Lot, as Eve, what did they go off of? Like I've told you before, I've met so many dynamite-looking women in my life. But you start to talk to them. And inside, they're worse than a sewer. Mm. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. We all know what happened with uh, Adam and Eve because of what, you know, the garden. Lot, he looked around and he, Lot's just man, he's in heaven. He lost all his... We have no scriptural record of Lot ever regaining his substance. It is assumed through Ammon and Moab, his children, through incest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Even thus, too, we, we got to remember the gene pool was a lot better than the dilution we have here. Besides... It came out, you know, the law wasn't written yet, okay? There's many variables there, you know, because people, well, there was incest in Scripture. Uh, yeah, there was in the beginning parts. Yeah, there was, because that's all that was available. And the gene pool was not as messed up as it is now. But in the law, the Lord finally got to a point, it's like, okay, that's done. Don't do that anymore, okay? Because the uh, population had reached a thing and a bunch of diversity and whatnot, okay? All right? Don't, don't be afraid to, to tackle that uh, when you come in, uh, across that brother, sister. That's actually quite easily to refute. Easy to refute, excuse me, okay? Proverbs 6, 20 under verse 29. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. <laughs> Today's the 6, go, uh, go figure. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment, stop. What are you putting before your eyes? What are you putting before your eyes? How about you try putting the scripture before your eyes? Oh, you can't read, huh? Put them on a, put them on a screen so you can look at that at least. Those are available, brother, sister. Okay? All right? For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the ways of life. 
to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Have you ever heard of this AI stuff, these uh, chat bots? Have you ever heard of that? Huh? That you can do on your cell phone or on the um, uh, tablets or, what, or whatever? You ever heard of that one? Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Let neither let her take thee with her eyelids. So when you see, this is addressing what you're looking at. Doesn't sin look so beautiful? Hmm? It's getting colder now, but it's like, you know, walking around when it's hot and seeing girls wearing dental floss and wearing things that only a husband should see. And you're the bad guy when you look at a piece of meat being dangled in front of you. Yeah. For by means of a whorish woman, Mystery Babylon, the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, the promoter of all this nonsense, Satan's church, Satan, for by means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. <laughs> can man can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Look what happened to Eve. Look what happened to Lot. Hmm? Look at your own life. What happens when you went after something that you know now that you shouldn't have? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her, toucheth her shall not be innocent. That's an interesting shift there, isn't it, to adultery? Well, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, one verse. One verse. Matthew chapter 5, one verse. Verse 28. If you're there, read it. Matthew chapter 5. Let's read, um, hmm. Let's read verses 27 on to verse 29. Ye have heard that it was said, By them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust at her, I lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Not a physical. He's, that's not addressing. What is that? Right here, Jack. That comes through what? Through the flesh through the eyes, and through the pride of life. Looking at another man's wife. Looking at another woman's husband. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, and uh, the thought of foolishness. We're going to touch on that in a second, but let's, verse 29, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It begins with the eyes. Sorry if you hear that nonsense in the background. I cannot control my neighbors. Job 31. Brad, don't we have a video that you're going to look at? Yeah, we do. I told you, we're going through the scriptures first. Job 31, verses 1 on to verse 12. Job, when he was defending himself. We, we talked about this in another video. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Look at what this says. Why then should I think upon a maid? 
you know, there's been times when I've been out in public and it, and it used to make my wife uncomfortable, but she gets it. She gets it. She gets it. They'll be there like when we've gone out tracking and whatnot and um, it was warmer out and, you know, um, I, you know, tracking, you know, getting the cereals and stuffing them in there and whatnot. But sometimes I would kind of <laughs> just stare at my wife, you know, keep my focus on her while doing, you know, what we're supposed to do. And at, at first it kind of is like, why are you looking at me like that? And then, you know, I would go, it's like, did you happen to see all that? And she's like, you get it? See, because if you let your eye wander, end the argument, well, there's no harm with looking. Okay. <laughs> Can you? Come on. Now, there are brethren out there who deal better with this than others. But even they, like our, our brother from North Dakota, who, um, who actually seems to have a really good grasp and handle on burning. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, he does. I've talked with him num numerous times, numerous times. And he's, he's one of those that's like, nah, whatever, with that thing. You know, what I'm addressing, while there's some of us, um, if we look too long, it's like, whoa! Ugh! You know, so, made a covenant with my eyes. I, I'm looking at my, I'm looking at that woman of mine. I'm looking at her. So, when we have gone out, and that happens, you know, where I'm just like, like, zoned out or in the zone as it is and my wife notices it she she kind of she gives me kind of a look it's like no but she gets it okay let's continue uh we're reading verse 12 for what portion of god is there from above and what inheritance of the almighty from on high is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? You know, God's a mind reader. Devils ain't. The devil will want you to think that he is. But he isn't. Devils can't read your mind. There ain't no scriptural proof of that. There is clear scriptural proof that the Lord can read your mind. Of course, he's got the Father, of course. But there is no scriptural proof that says that a devil can read your mind. What a devil can do, knowing that, knowing the flesh, because Satan's all about the flesh, like it says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, I believe that is, about how he's only about the things of man and not the things of God. Man is flat, you know, right here. Man is what? Man's a living soul and housed in what? Dirt. Okay? All right? So the devil, knowing that, through his devils, can make it seem to you that they're reading, that they're reading your minds when they put in front of a dog that's drooling a piece of meat. You know what I'm saying? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted to deceit, if your eye finally cut it off, pluck it off, if your, if, uh, hand, if your foot cut it off, if your hand, okay? Okay? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted, uh, uh, hasted to deceit, okay? Check your margin. It's probably a reference from Matthew on the Sermon on the Mount for Instruction and in Righteousness in here. Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know mine integrity. If my step hath turned out of the way and mine heart walked after mine eyes. Yeah, God knows your heart. Yeah. He who trusts trust in his own heart is a fool. And 
if any blot hath cleaved to mine hands. There it is. If your eye offend thee, pluck it out. If your foot offend thee, cut it off. If your hand, cut it off. The Lord's not talking about self-mutilation. He's like, come out from among them and be separate. There it is in Job. Okay? <coughs> that crosses dispensational lines. Let me sow, S-O-W, and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been, in have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, disposable to society, as if they're uh, a, a razor, you know. I don't want your wife. I want my wife. <laughs> okay? Besides, as a lost man, as a lost man, I was the other man. I'm forgiven for that, but you know, you talk about a memory that the, the, the devils will, when I'm having moments, especially when my heart's acting up, you know, the devils will bring those memories, those things that I should have not been a part of, not touched, and saw that I can't unsee. Then let my wife grind on to another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is an hyenas crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and would root out all mine increase. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Oh, not Song of Songs. You read the scriptures today. Proverbs 24. One on the nine. George Carlin once said, uh, don't mess with covetousness. It, it creates jobs. And see, you're being fed uh, through whatever instrument um, a constant diet of flesh, covetousness, concupiscence. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom, fear the Lord, is an house builded, and by understanding, departing from evil, is it established. And by knowledge, there's wisdom, understanding, knowledge right there. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with precious and pleasant riches. Riches that come from wisdom and understanding, fear the Lord, and departing from evil. The true riches. If you can't handle the stuff of the earth, how's... How can the Lord even think to start giving you the things that come from heaven? If, you, if, the, if the horses have tired you out, you know. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel... Thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool. I like that. The fear of the Lord is too high for one who says in his heart there is no God. Of course. He openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Person is his spirit's own body. The thought of foolishness behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. 
So what do we do? Obviously, this is in context to save people. But if you're lost and you're watching this, um, you got to take, you want to really consider of what's coming down the pipe and just how dangerous these things actually are. Well, Brad, you use one. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But you know what? Uh, sometimes you just got to put it down and back away. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 20. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ, save people who have the Lord within them. Those are the only ones who are members of Christ. Just because you're walking around and you're saved and you don't know it, shut up. No, that's not what that's talking about. Only saved people are what? The members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. This is talking, he's talking about the physical sense. Yes, he is. But that's not the only application to this context. That's a problem. When you got people who say something like, well, they'll come to this, well, that's only talking about the physical. So then what? That gives you every excuse because all things are lawful for you to uh, commit adultery and make yourself member with a harlot in a different fashion, even though it's not physical. Just as if I... What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh. See, 16 is talking, yes. But that's not the extent of the application for this. It's like someone trying to tell you that, like, Jeremiah 10 is only applicable for instruction and righteousness in one thing. <laughs> Leave that alone. I just brought that up as an example. Okay? But he that is joined unto the Lord is one, lowercase s, spirit. So if we're one spirit with the Lord, what about them that ain't, huh? What spirit are they of? Oh, one that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Beg your pardon, I can't pause this. Got this chap lip stuff going on. Verse 18. Flee fornication. Now, context, he's talking physical. But are you really that dense to think that fornication is just limited to a physical sense? Hmm. What are you trying to justify? <laughs> yeah. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Note that. But he that committeth, sin, uh, committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Again, context, he is making the fornication there clearly in the physical sense. But also, flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. So, there are other types of fornication, even though Paul is specifically addressing the physical context. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? That's only applicable for us who are saved. For ye are bought with a price, death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, lowercase s, which are God's. Meaning belongs to him, not that you are a God. You never know with some of these devils. Ouch. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And, and this, is, this, this is something also too because like I've talked about, like we, excuse me, have talked about before. 
I have seen some women, good looking women, in their face. As old as my wife, skinny as a rail, fake bosom, dressed up, painted up with war paint on, trying to look as if she's a millennial, a kid. I've seen that with guys my age and older. Trying, you know, the yuppie guys who, you know, wear their hair all which way to the moon and wearing the chic stuff and trying to look like something they're not. No, the beauty of the age is a gray head. Yeah, Brad. I, I like a bald head. What can I say? <laughs> Just a little soap. You know, I don't, I don't ever have a bad hair day. <laughs> okay. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 22 and verse 26. But see, again, the focus is, then is in. Youth is king. And, and before we get that, uh, what's that in Ecclesiastes 11? Ecclesiastes 11, huh? Uh, Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes, oh boy. But, and who better can tell you this than Solomon? But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. I'm sure, go ahead. You're going to pay for it later, kid. You're going to pay for it. You think it's harmless to sit there and play those rancid video games? You're going to pay for it later, boy. Hey, brother, if he's there, put him up right now. Hey, don't play them things. You're going to, you, you get to be my age or, pa or pappy's age, huh? You're going to pay for it. Why? Because you can't unsee what you put before your eyes, son. Put it away. Put it away. The things that you lust after through the, through the flesh and through your eyes and the pride of life, you won't always be able to unsee them. And they will cling to you. Better is it for you now. To get away from those things. But you think it's okay to play a video game, to watch scary movies, to watch porn, or to look at things and oogle, ah, oh, you get to be my age. And praise the Lord, the Lord saves you. Can't unsee things. That's why it's very cautious. We have to be very cautious. But what we put before our eyes, brethren. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth are vanity. 2 Timothy 2, thank you, Lord. Verse 2, uh, chapter 2, 22 and 26. Flee also youthful lusts. Have you not noticed that a lot of sin that's being purported onto you and given to you from Satan is of a youthful sphere? Hmm? Cosmetic? Go figure. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, which is self-sacrifice, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart, be amongst our own. I'm, I'm going to spend time with brethren, my wife, our family. Yes, we, are, we go out there to be witnesses, but I ain't, I ain't hanging out with them. Like dung on your foot, man. Okay? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. We don't have to answer every question. We are to give a, an answer, a reason for the hope that dwells in us. But we don't have to answer all your questions. Especially when you already when we already have and you're asking the same blasted question repackaged. Our enemies do a lot of that. Ask the same thing but in a different way. <laughs> and the servant of the Lord must not strive, 
but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, striving. People is like, well, you're striving. Um, we are to strive for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Video for that will be in the description box. Okay? And the gentle. Christianity tells you that the gentleness here is don't scare them. Don't tell the sinner about their sin. The gentleness is, in reality, you don't take the scriptures and bash them over the head with more, more than they can handle at the first. You give them morsels. That's what it's talking about. Okay? It's not telling us to be sissified little people who are walking on eggshells afraid to say, Hey! Unless you are broken of your self-righteousness and be a man and take responsibility for putting the Lord on the cross and you have the hell scared out of you and call on his name, guess what? You go to hell, Jack! The Lord hates what you're doing! You go to hell, Jack! But see, Christianity says, you're not being gentle. It's not the gentle being referred to there. Remember that. And don't be afraid. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, like people who want to continue on believing in atheism and, and stupidity, okay? Willful ignorance, okay? In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure <laughs> will give them repentance, to the acknowledgement, uh, to the acknowledging of the truth. I was going to say a different word there, but I'm not going to go there. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Romans 12, just one verse, verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. If you were there already, read it. It was said unto her, the, uh, Romans 12, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Romans 12, excuse me, I was in the wrong place. <laughs> Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Now, not everything we put before our eyes is evil. But that which is evil, we are supposed to what? Abhor it. Abhor is a hate. That is so extreme. You got hatred, then you have someone who despises and abhor, loathing, loathing, abhor, the levels, whatever. Um, despising, when someone says to you, I despise you, that's a little bit more than hate. When you say to someone, I abhor you, that's a lot more than hate. Loathe. Mm, you get the point. We are to hate that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Abhor is extreme hatred. Okay? Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Now we have a whole thing here of going off on this, but we will address that in another video. Because we do got something else we got to look at. Psalm 139, verses 19 unto the close. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God, Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. They say that they're saved. They speak against the Lord wickedly. By their works you shall know them. Okay? Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. If you're an enemy of God, you're my enemy. I am to hate what the Lord hates and love what he loves. 
And if you are against the Lord Jesus Christ, you are my enemy. I am to hate you with perfect hatred. And I'll be honest, there are only two people that I can look at you and tell you I hate. Myself first, and a certain guy from England. Oh, Brad! Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate me? That, excuse me. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? Excuse me. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? Yeah. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See, it begins with us. It begins with us judging ourselves. And you know what? Christianity is like, you know, that Butch Meyer. It's like, love yourself and wrap yourself up. Uh, give yourself a hug. Every sleazy believist out there truly loves them own, their own selves because they are their own God. They save themselves. But Job 42, 100 verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And see, self-loathing, ought to bring you to the cross. But see, what happens is people will have a type of self-loathing, but will cratch, uh, scratch and claw to find some vestige of self to redeem themselves. Hence, they save themselves by their own belief, not having a true abhorrence for the fact that they are a lost sinner going to hell. And that which I do, I allow not. But that which I hate, Paul himself even referred to himself as, oh, wretched man. Okay? Okay? Let's go back to Psalm 101. Now let's finish this up. Verse 4. On to the close. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. I've unfortunately have known wicked persons at first and then when they get discovered, it's like, okay, I'm away from you. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. And interesting, look in your margin. There might be a reference for these six things doth the Lord hate. Okay. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. The body of Christ, our own kind. That they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. Different dispensation, of course. This is a Psalm of David. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Think about this. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell inside my house. Yeah, you see those? Those are all uh, notes for other videos, okay? He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy the I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Now we're gonna watch this video. We've gone through the scriptures. We're gonna watch this video. This is a scary video. Um, this has this um, 
Zuckerberg guy in it. Okay. Oh, uh, the waste book dude. Okay. All right. Go to the full screen. We're going to watch this. Mark Zuckerberg, this alien looking devil uh, who, who apparently is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu dude. So, yeah, he, he can mess you up. <laughs> but now what, what we have discussed, that's why we went through the scripture first, so we can go through this. Check this out. Thank you, brother, by the way. The link for this video will be in the description box. Like I have said in previous videos, from henceforward, any video, no matter what it is, that the Lord has me to do like this, the this it will be in the description box, unedited, that you may see it. Okay? Let's go. Come on, play. Welcome to Connect. We are incredibly proud to introduce Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality headset. Quest 3 is the most powerful headset that we have ever shipped and it allows you to blend the physical and digital worlds together. So what's real? You ever put one of them things on? It's actually quite, I get, I've, when I've done it before, I've gotten claustrophobic. Um, just like, whoa, but setting wicked things before your eyes? Okay, all right. And what happens when they lock you in your house? Set wicked things before your eyes, huh? You can navigate it with our, just your hands if you want, and the hand tracking is getting really good. Um, or with these brand new precision. If your hand uh, offended, cut it off controllers that we've designed for games or work or things that you where you want some extra precision and you know of course it's completely standalone no wires no battery pack you know nothing like that that's going to break your your sense of presence so when you put on quest 3 break your sense of presence what does that mean that you don't he's claiming that once you got that thing on that you won't forget that you're in the real world see that's the point to mix the fantasy with reality I don't believe that there's going to be replicant Terminator dudes walking around. I don't believe that once whatsoever. But with this kind of technology? People already don't live in the real world anyway. Wow. Wow. Free. Uh, you see the physical... Look at this guy. Look, look at that guy. Come on. I mean, come on. He looks like an alien. Okay. He's also, like I said, some like Brazilian jiu-jitsu master and could put an amplata on me and kill me like that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, continue. Only now it is a canvas that you can bring your digital objects into the world. You know, Quest 3, it, it, it understands your space so you can play with the world around you. You can self leg. You can play with the world around you. Shape your own reality. That's witchcraft! Bending, shaping, shifting reality, if I'm not mistaken, that is the definition of witchcraft. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Create your own little world. Lego puzzles, or you can build your own creations on any flat surface in your room. You can play games like BAM with your friends sitting around a table, whether you're physically right there together, or even if they're far away. You know, people love working out in Quest. But now, if you're doing a body combat workout, the targets are going to come at you in your physical room, whether you're in your living room or if you're, you're, uh, you're in your home gym, you're be able to look around and see the room around you, so you're going to be a lot more comfortable, you know, swinging your arms and moving your body. Now, these experiences are possible because Quest 3 shows your physical space with... That looked a little devilish, didn't it? 
10 times more pixels than what we had on Quest 2. And it automatically maps the space that you're in using two dedicated color camera sensors and a depth sensor, which makes it so that if you, you know, pick up a digital ball and throw it at the physical wall, it'll bounce off it. Or now, this also means that you're going to be able to take a big virtual screen and just drop it wherever you are, and it'll show up in your physical room. And, and this is going to the ultimate replacement of TV. You know, in the book of Revelation, it says all will worship the beast. How are they going to worship? Through what? What medium? Some kind of internet medium, I believe. Hey, make the image come to life. You put that on your head. And then, hey, there's that man of sin, the son of perdition, in your living room. going to unlock a lot of awesome experiences for hanging out with people, watching content, and even if they're not there with you. Now, one thing that I'm, I'm pretty excited to share today is that X Cl Xbox Cloud Gaming is coming to Quest in December. Gates and Zuckerberg. I know Gates doesn't technically own or run whatever. He, he was the one who created it. But... Xbox, Microsoft, and Zuckerberg. Oh boy! And next year, uh, we're launching something that we call Augments, which are basically persistent, spatially anchored digital objects that you can interact with. So, you know, you can put a frame on your wall with photos and videos from Facebook. And the people are cheering this. This is what's coming. God help, God help you. God help us. Instagram, um, you can put a digital portal next. When you have this kind of capability, what other need would you have for the physical, real world about you? You're a man or a woman and you're lonely? Hey! Next to your physical workout gear, so every time you walk by it, you can easily jump into a supernatural workout. It is the most powerful headset yet with the next generation processor. Better displays and optics. It's 40% thinner, a lot more comfortable, and it comes with the great new precision controllers or the awesome hand tracking that has just gotten a lot better. You know, end to end, we've designed this thing and optimized it, the hardware stack, the software stack, so it can deliver amazing mixed reality and the world's best immersive content library. So there it is. Yeah. All right, Quest 3, it is shipping on August 10th. You can order it today for $499. So, we are building a platform. $499, that's a lot of money. For creating AIs that can help you get things done or just have fun. Um, and, you know, the way this is going to work is there, people are going to be able to interact with these AIs across the whole meta universe of products. So, you know, of course, you'll be able to chat with them in WhatsApp and Messenger and Instagram Direct, but Beyond that, they're going to have profiles in Instagram and Facebook, and you'll be able to interact with them. And eventually, they're going to be embodied as avatars and live and be able to interact with them in the metaverse, too. And we're going to open... Predictive programming. Metaverse. You heard about in Hollywood the uh, Marvel Universe, the DCU Universe... Predictive programming, metaverse, that kind of stuff. You know, Satan is bold enough to shove in your face what he's going to do to you. Like the Jesuits, they make their plans known. They're not afraid because they got a good guess that they're going to succeed. Open this platform up for developers and more use cases soon. I'm really looking forward to seeing 
uh, what all of you build. But even before that, um, we have been creating a bunch of AIs ourselves, and we're going to start rolling these out in beta. Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything. Online. See? Don't look, look, look at what they're offering. Look at this stupid first. commercial. This. Look at this. this. All for the uh, cell phone stuff. Like Amazon see stuff. that? You can drop you see that? Automatically. Look at that. I can show you how. Look at that. But I can't huh? do it for you. What was that People saying? Real money doing uh. um, Today and, and ramping that a bit over the next couple of days. Um, so let's meet some of them. All right. First up. We got Meta AI. Meta AI is it's your, your basic assistant, right? That you can that you can talk to like a person, right? You can you can message Meta AI and any of the messaging apps, WhatsApp, um, Messenger, Instagram, direct. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Mr. Zuckerberg. Like I said, he could put an on plata on me and kill me in a heartbeat. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. Correct. Um, soon you're gonna be able to message it in Quest 3, and it's gonna help you, you know, answer you know, your basic questions or requests. Um, let's check this out. So let's say you're, you're planning dinner. Um, you got Max the sous chef, um, who can help you come up with a recipe and uh, help you come up with ideas. Now that's a artificial intelligence bot right there. Okay? Okay? <laughs> you know, you know, YouTube will, like, with comments, will do things because they think they're bots. I have often wondered, and a couple of the brethren and I have talked about this, you know, we, sometimes you really don't know if you're interacting with a person, spirit, soul, and body, or one of these AI things. <laughs> I mean... Pretty scary when you think about it, you know? Yes, yeah, so if you want to find a way to sneak some broccoli into your kid's dinner, Max has got you. You know, let's say you add too much salt to the recipe, it can help you balance it out. All right? Or let's say, you know, you're writing something like a, a keynote and you're not really sure where to get started. You can ask Lily um, or personal editor AI who can help you brainstorm and share tips or you can... The blending of reality. It, this is witchcraft. This is witchcraft! Those are not real. I mean, okay, the picture or what are, they, what are they called? Avatars might be of an... But then again, they have these AI-generated pictures out there where they, you can look at them. It's the Google Images and stuff, man. And they look absolutely real. And it's like AI-created uh, imagery. It's like... Whoa. More human than human is their motto. <laughs> it's not funny. Like I said, I, I do not believe that you're going to be seeing the Terminator or replicants walking around out there. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that at all. This. You can have an AI chatbot. Amen, brother. We're in for some pretty dark times. Give her a bunch of the text that you've that you've written, and she can help you edit it and make it better. Or maybe you're traveling and you're trying to plan a road trip with your kids. Um, you've got Lorena, who's going to be able to help you find the best barbecue. Uh, on the road trip or find a good national park or a beautiful spot to, right, to take the kids. For... Let's say you want to play a role-playing game. Well, now you can just drop the, the dungeon master into one of your chats. And uh, let's check this guy out. Let's get medieval, player. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't wanted to play a text, you know, adventure game with Snoop Dogg. What do I say? 
What, what is there to say? Um, we've, we're also very focused on, um, on giving all of you the ability to build AIs too. Um, so we've been creating something that we call AI Studio. And it is a platform for building um, these kind of AIs. And we're starting by opening up the API for integrating into our messaging apps to start. And that's going to open in the coming weeks. We are also building a sandbox so that you know, people who don't code can also train AIs like this. And we're working on that and iterating on it. And we hope to have that out sometime early next year. And we're also working on bringing all of this uh, to the metaverse too, where you're going to be able to have. Remember the pre predictive programming that the Jesuits have done for years now. Metaverse. They prepared you with the Spider Verse, the uh, Multiverse, the Marvel Verse, and the DC Verse. Remember? Okay. See, these people have been prepared for this. These embodied. And when you remove man from the equation, physical. You know, physical, man, you know, I could sit there and touch my wife. You, you could sit there and touch your husband. You know, you could pet your dog. You take man out of the equation. You make man the lesser, hence a desensitizing. Think about, you know, the video games that the kids play, that the, the shoot em up games. What are they doing? They're desensitizing children to death. Huh? My, my grandson, he's like a marksman shot. Better than I am. You know, I can hit one. I'll hit you. I'll hit what I'm aiming at. I can hit you. But my grandson, you know. Guess how he learned how to shoot like that? Call of Duty. Don't you for one second, pal, just as if I said, well, there's no such thing as a bad video game. You can wipe your butt with that and go to hell. Don't give me that, man. It's a desensitizing. You're taking man out of the equation and replacing it with what? WWW666, the number of the beast. These AIs will be able to be embodied as avatars. Um, you'll be able to make them as NPCs in the different games and experiences that you build and all of the different Horizon worlds. And I think that that's going to be really neat. So that brings me to the last thing that I want to show you today, which is the next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. <laughs> You know, um, um, in the movie um, with Downey in it, uh, not that strapped by an angel, um, Downey, Iron Man, he had a pair of glasses that, and remember, I don't know any of you can remember that movie, They Live? Predictive programming, people, predictive programming. I remember some uh, putts, sent me an email. It's like, that, you know, the, that's conspiracy theory about predictive programming. You're on crack cocaine. Now, these are designed um, so you can stay in the moment and stay connected without having to take your phone out. You can capture what's going on around you. You can share with your friends um, in the world. Everything about this is upgraded from the first version. There is no stronger drug than reality and a reality that you can manipulate through this. Cameras are a lot better, so the images and videos that you capture are a lot clearer. Um, the audio is a lot better, so when you're listening to music or podcasts or taking calls, um, that's a lot better. Um, they're lighter, they're more comfortable, and there are a lot more styles too. 
But the most interesting thing about this isn't any of those specs. It's that these are the first smart glasses that are built and shipping with Meta AI in them. Artificial intelligence and sunglasses! You, you would think you would read this out of a science fiction book! So, starting in the US, you're going to get this state-of-the-art AI that you can interact with hands-free wherever you go. So, you know, let's say you're grilling with your family and you want to know. No man might buy or sell save he who had the mark and the number of his name. I'm not saying, but it's going to be all-encompassing everywhere. This, which is not the mark of the beast. Did you hear that? Which is not the mark of the beast. Okay. Um, it's that conditioning, programming. So when the mark of the beast arrives, you're already used to it because your everyday thing is now surrounded by what? WWW 666. World Wide Web, Internet, that kind of thing. You have to be online for this stuff to work, remember. Know so, how long you need to be cooking that chicken for. You know, or you're playing pickleball and hits the line and you want to know if that's a fault. She disagrees, but you know the truth. <laughs> or let's say you just want to settle a debate, you know, some trivia as you're going out through the world. Just ask your medic your Ray-Ban Metaglasses and they'll respond and, and, and get you the answer. You are going to be able to live stream to your friends and followers from your glasses. All right, these Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. Okay, that, that, them that's, on. that's enough, that's enough. You, you, you get the point, you get the point. What else is there to say? Little children, keep yourself from idols. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>